And businesses and homeowners in KwaZulu Natal's coastal areas have started with mop up operations and counting the cost of this weekend's damage. Quite a number of homes, businesses, cars, and other infrastructure were all damaged by spring high tides. Experts further say that the severe storm was the result of a combination of spring tides and a cold front, resulting in gale force winds and rough sea conditions. ENC senior reporter Jason Tafia is following through with the story and joins me now from Marina Beach. On the KwaZulu Natal South Coast. Uh, Jason, a very warm good morning to you, colleague. And I've spoken to Kevin about this, and equally important to touch base in KwaZulu Natal to see how those mop up operations are going. Tabelo, you know, standing here on Marina Beach, it's hard to believe what we saw in that video that was so widely circulated on Sunday. I mean, just take a look at how calm things are now. You, as you rightfully said, there are mop-up operations, clean-up operations that are taking place on the beach, and that is currently in full swing. But another reason I'm showing you this shot is to give you and our viewers an idea of how far away the water normally is from one of the restaurants that was really badly damaged here. That's the Mariner's Seafood Restaurant. And if you look now, you know, as uh, Francois just pans across, you'll get a sense of exactly where the restaurant is located. And the water had traveled all that way, the high tide, which eventually washed into the restaurant as patrons were there. They were enjoying the, the game, the big game on, on Sunday. And fortunately, as the owner tells me, it wasn't as busy as it could have been. But nevertheless, it's still, there was still massive damage that was caused when that water washed in. I'm now joined by John Cable, who owns the Mariner Seafood Restaurant. Firstly, I'm really sorry about what's happened to your place. It looks like there is a lot of work that needs to be done. You were here. What was it like witnessing all of this take place? Oh, you know, uh, we, we were all watching rugby and we were having a bit of fun and we, we knew that the surf was quite big and we were expecting uh, high tides, uh, but we weren't expecting anything that, that, you know, that bad. We've had high tides, high spring tides in the past and it's often lapped up to the bank, uh, but it's never been... I've owned a restaurant for five years and I've never known it uh, as, as bad as that. I've never seen a surf that big in my life. I've lived on the coast all my life, never seen it so big. So it was, uh, you know, it was very scary at that time. Uh, um, like, like you said, luckily we weren't too busy. Otherwise, I think there would have been some loss of life for sure. Yeah. It looks like you're going to be, be putting in a lot of work. I know some of it's already started, but is it? Do you think that you'll be back up and running anytime soon? Well, yeah, obviously, we'd love to open up the restaurant again. Uh, we've got December season around the corner, which is our main season. Um, living on the south coast, that's when you make your money in December, in holiday time. Uh, but obviously, it's going to cost a lot of money to get up and running. So we've got uh, in time is against us. Um, and the other issue is that we don't have a, a long-term lease from the municipality. So we're waiting for uh, feedback from, from the municipality to see if they're going to issue us a long-term lease. Uh, you know, I, I would be crazy to reinvest in the, in the restaurant um, without a long-term lease. So, uh, you know, we, it's, it's a waiting game at the moment, unfortunately. And this restaurant has been an institution uh, in, in, in these parts, so it would be a pity to see it uh, not, not reopen again. If you do open up any time soon, what, what measures do you think could be taken here to ensure that there isn't a repeat? I mean, it's not likely that this will happen any time soon, but you never know. Yeah. Well, the last time they had a similar incident like this was, I think it was 2006, but it was no, nowhere near as bad as this. And then when we took over the restaurant, we, we built, uh, we got those proper sandbags and we built a bank over here just to protect the bank in, in case. And it's, you know, it's often lapped up to the, bank, to the bank, but it's never gone over that far. Um, you know, so, so that would, you know, we would obviously have to, to redo that. Whether it would be strong enough uh, if it happened again, I don't know. But if you think about it, there's been 17 years or so since the last one. Um, you know, I don't suppose it's that bad if, if you look at it like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, you, you could you could do um, you could build differently, but there you're up against environmentalists. What will they allow you to to build? What would the municipality allow you to build? Yeah. So you know, it's all those things you've got to take you know, take into consideration. John Cable, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your time. That's the owner of the Mariner's Seafood Restaurant. So lots to consider here to Melo, just apart from rebuilding, it's also about what can be done to ensure that if there is such a high tide again, 
what precautions can be taken. But with that comes some of that red tape. So hopefully we will get an opportunity to also speak to the municipality here to see um, how they will be assisting businesses that are working in this area. That's right, Jason. A significant point. Preventative measures uh, as opposed to just uh, reactionary. And I suppose we'll continue to explore all those avenues as uh, we continue, of course, to rebuild back because we know we've seen the images in as far as cars being damaged, homes, businesses as well uh, in both KwaZulu-Natal and the Western Cape. That will still be ongoing. And thanks so much for placing this uh, on the spotlight right here on Newslink. ENCS senior reporter, Jason Thapia.